So we'll fix the ball to the wheel, sealing the edges. You'll notice I'm left-handed, so if you're a right-hander, the wheel would be spinning the other direction. So we'll get going with the centering process. Centering is your highest speed. Not that you want the wheel on 100%, but you certainly need the majority of the wheel's speed for centering. We'll start by coning the clay up. Once we've made a cone, we take it back down. Depending on how fresh your clay is, if it's brand new, if it's reclaimed, you can cone a couple of times or more. Whatever you're comfortable with. Coning is a process that I've been told actually aligns the molecules of the clay, makes it easier to throw. From there we'll go into the centering process. Now centering is the hardest thing for beginners to learn generally, especially for smaller children requires you to keep your wall hand and the wall hand is the hand that the clay is coming into so the rotation of the wheel is coming into this hand you make a wall your other hand goes on top generally at a 45 degree angle you don't want to go right on top if you go right on top you'll notice here how it creates a well well if you create a well what can happen is that can create a volcano and close an air pocket in the top when you go to open, that air pocket will generally blow up on you and knock it off center. So try to keep this support hand at a bit of an angle, say 45 degrees, let's say. So again, my wall hand is solid. You can see how off the ball is right now. I'll kick the wheel up, give it quite a bit of force, and you should see that ball come into center. So a way to tell if you're on center is on the outgoing side of the wheel, the side that the clay is coming out or away from you on, take two fingers, hold it on the side of the ball, on the top of the ball. As long as your finger isn't jumping around, you should be in center. So nice and smooth, you can see there's still a little bit of kick in this one, very minor. But for purposes of this demo, and you know what, we'll try to get a little, a little more in center for it. Keep your clay slippery at all times. If it's starting to stick on your hands, you need to add water. Another important thing is approaching the clay. You can go onto the clay with a lot of force. In other words, I can put my hands onto the clay with some force. But when you're releasing the clay, you need to release very easily or it'll knock it off center. So here's an example. I'll give the clay a tap. You can see now, out of center, look at my fingers jumping around. I'll bring it back into center, but I'll release very quickly and you'll notice it will be in center but as I release it will go back to something like this so you might have seen it there go into center nice and smooth but I release so fast you well know, maybe I didn't release fast enough it's not very bad actually but normally that's another beginner thing is releasing too quickly will cause things to come off center. That goes through throughout throwing. In other words, with your pulling, with opening, any time that you're releasing the clay, you want to release very slowly. So 
So now that we have the clay in center, we're going to open our clay up to throw the form, and again, we're throwing a bowl. We want to plunge a hole down the center of the clay to within about three-eighths of an inch. That three-eighths of an inch is actually our bottom, our floor of our pot. There's a variety of ways to do this. You can use three fingers, two fingers, one finger, one thumb, supporting, not supporting. I favor two thumbs myself, but the most important thing here is that this is our second fastest wheel speed, so we're somewhere about half, half the speed of the wheel. Supporting on our thighs on the edge of the splash pan and plunging our hole straight down. Now we're not trying to open the top of the pot. We're trying to just make a hole straight down. So in other words, I don't want to try to open this up any. I just want to try to go down. Now I don't need to go down at a very, you know, small hole. It's fine to do, you know, a couple of fingers. But again, smoothly, evenly, try to keep it in center. Keep some water on the clay so it doesn't get sticky. So once I have my hole plunged, I'll use my needle tool to check the depth. So this here is a needle tool. It's one of the common tools used in pottery. And I'll take the needle end, plunge it down the center with the wheel off, run my finger down to the edge of the clay, hold it there, and pull it out. And there is about three-eighths of an inch. That's what I'm looking for in the bottom of a pot. Now, if you wanted to trim a foot into the pot, you may go with, oh, half an inch or so. But for a flat bottom pot, three-eighths is plenty. So now we're going to open our hole fingers flat across the bottom of the pot. Using half wheel speed, we'll pull open the bottom of our pot. Here we'll want to compress the bottom. Compression keeps the bottom from cracking, supposedly. That's the story that's being told in most places anyway. And we'll start, uh, start our lips.
Got a bit of wobble in my pot from not centering it fully, but here I'll start shaping. I figure so. Here we can clean up the rim a little bit. We'll use the rib to clean the bottom of the pot. So I'll get the water out of the bottom. And there's a, an example of a three pound bowl.